If you had a crystal ball that could predict future health problems, would you use it? Your body has such a warning system. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Our body's natural crystal ball is heart rate variability. There's been a lot of research on this, and the science is showing that it's a possible marker of the state of your health, your resilience, and behavioral flexibility. Low heart rate variability is even a predictor of developing depression. Let me explain what heart rate variability is. Heart rate variability is the measurement of how much your heartbeat changes from beat to beat. Your heart is not a metronome that keeps perfect timing. It's controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which has two parts, the sympathetic system, which speeds up your heart in response to stress, and the parasympathetic system that puts the brakes on and slows your heart. The ideal state is where your heart speeds up when it needs to, like when you're engaged in activity, then slows down when it doesn't need to work as hard. It's like the new cars that turn off the engine when you've stopped and then turn it back on when your foot is off the brake and you need to move. This turning off and on reserves fuel while the car is at a standstill. Your nervous system has a similar balance and the more your heart can slow down and be in idle mode, the better. Slowing down whenever you're idling represents a high heart rate variability. So imagine yourself in the car at a red light, and I've done this before, you put your foot on the brake and the car engine turns down or off, you take your foot off the brake and it starts up. Back on the brake, it stops. Off the brake, it starts. That's a lot of change, high variability in the state of the engine. That's what we want with our heart, for it to be very responsive to changes in energy needs. But let's say there's something wrong with your parasympathetic response and your heart doesn't slow down as much when it doesn't need to work very hard. In that case, your heart doesn't change as much from beat to beat and you have a low heart rate variability. It's not entirely clear how this low variability causes or predicts depression, but researchers believe it has to do with an impaired parasympathetic response. And this can get deep and complicated, but let me just remind you that part of the parasympathetic slowing down response is controlled by your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve communicates with your gut bacteria. Your gut bacteria or microbiome is considered your second brain and plays a huge role in mental and physical well being. Now, I don't know which comes first, poor gut health or suboptimal vagus nerve function, but you can see how alterations in the vagus nerve functioning connects to your mental health, especially depression. So it's one thing to see this association between vagal tone, it's called, and depression, cognitive decline, and poor cardiac health, but it's another thing entirely to be able to predict having these problems using your heart rate variability. And that's the direction the research is going in. For you, that means you wanna keep up with your heart rate variability. How do you measure it? The most accurate way is by getting hooked up to an electrocardiogram or EKG and monitoring your heart rhythm. But of course, that's not practical for the average person. There are devices that you can use to monitor your heart rate at home. You can wear a chest strap like the Polar H7 heart rate sensor. Most of the devices connect to an app that gives you the data. If you don't like the idea of wearing a strap around your chest, especially while you're sleeping, then there's the Aura Ring. Two devices that I use are a smart bed and a smart watch. I've mentioned my eight sleep pod before. It's a pad that fits over my mattress and it cools my bed to help me sleep deeper and tracks my heart rate. If you're interested in the bed, I'll have a link below in the description. The second device is my Apple Watch, which I make sure is charged, then I wear it while I sleep. The data from my watch can be read on several apps, including the iPhone's native health app. I do plan to order the Aura Ring and compare its data to my bed and my watch. So far, my bed and my watch data are pretty similar. How accurate are these devices? They don't match the technology of an EKG or medical grade heart monitor, but the technology in these commercial devices is continuing to improve. When it comes to interpreting your information, there isn't an absolute range that everyone needs to have. It's a very individualized number, and what's good for me may not be what's ideal for you. 
Once you start tracking your variability, you will see your range and be able to tell when you have a narrow variability and when it's wide. So with these commercial devices, going back to the accuracy question, if the rate is off a few milliseconds from what an EKG will show you, it's not that significant because what you're really tracking is the range. Is it high or is it low? Here's an example of my heart rate variability data. I get it from my 8sleep app. You can see my typical range is 28 to 67. I had a really good day on August 3rd with a variability of 78. And then several days before, it was 33 milliseconds. Sometimes when it's low, I'll get a notification asking me if I had a bad day or did something stress me out, and it will let me know that I need to take care of myself to improve my heart rate variability. So that brings me to the last point of how do you optimize your heart rate variability? Remember, you're not looking at absolute numbers, but a range. Your variability measures how responsive your heart is to environmental changes and internal body health. You should expect your variability to have its own range that reflects normal changes in your physical and mental state. To increase your heart's responsiveness, you want to do things that increase your vagal tone or activate your parasympathetic nervous system. You can do this by splashing cold water on yourself, like on your face or chest, deep breathing at a rate of 10 breaths per minute, which is inhaling for three seconds and exhaling for three seconds. You can also take probiotics. Take a look at this video for more on the vagus nerve and this one over here on the gut and the microbiome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.